It looks like the enemies of Adam Soshimole have not succeeded in their skimming. This is as the Court of Appeal in Abuja has lifted the suspension on him as the national chairman of the All Progressive Congress, which means he remains the party's national chairman. He has already presided over the party's National Working Committee meeting. We're waiting for the outcome of that. I was still with me in the studio to discuss the situation with the APC. Um, our two gentlemen, uh, we have uh, Dele Farotimi. Thank you very much. Thank you. And then we also have Guchuku Ikako. Thank you for Thank staying you with us. Nice. All right. He has a live line. So he survived something many feared would have, you know, ended his time as the national chairman um, of the party. This seems to be calm at the moment, even though we are yet to get the um, report from the meeting that was held. Uh, whether it's still on or it's been done, we have no update as of, as of now. You know, what would you say? about, let me start with you, the lawyer, the <laughs> court deciding it has to take the court to bring this level of calm. Ordinarily, disputations amongst thieves do not concern me much. And I would ordinarily not have volunteered any opinion on the family affairs of the Party of Saints, the APC. But since they have assaulted the public space with their disputations, one is compelled to offer an opinion. And what I would just say is this. The situation is not unlike asking the zebra what it thinks of the disputation amongst the lions. Because when they are really done, it's about the appropriation of the zebra's meat that um, Oshio Omole and his cohorts are busy at this moment having their disputations simply means that there is something that has to be shared, or whether it be power or something. But the last, one thing I know is that it has very little to do with my interest as a Nigerian. If it does, then they will probably have been talking about the 15 million Nigerian children aged between 5 and 14 who are walking on the street without any classroom in which to sit. If it were to be about the Nigerian people, we'll probably be talking about healthcare delivery, especially with coronavirus on its way, if it's not here already. If it was about the Nigerian people, it would have been a discussion centered on fighting the Boko Haram scourge. It hasn't, it's not a policy disagreement. The only thing that they are talking about is who gets to control the levers of powers within the APC before the 2023 election. It's not even a year since we elected the, uh, what do the I president? say? Now? Acting president. No, okay, the president. I tend to have this confusion as to who we actually elected, but that is neither here nor there. But the point is this. The disputation amongst the APC, for me, is just a distraction that the people really need to look beyond and then realize that, one, these arguments, be it the one between Obaseki and Oshiomole, or the one between the Khalifa in uh, Kaduna and whoever that one is speaking a quarrel with at any point in time, how does it really affect their pocketbook? How does it affect their lives as it relates to security or any of the things that makes life worth living? So at the end of the day, what you have it's a disputation amongst thieves. I say that deliberately, and I'm not apologizing for it. The fact of the matter is that at the end of the day, nobody has come out to say that this is about the welfare of the Nigerian people or their future. You have a situation where you're already losing over 50% of the budget because of an ongoing spat between the Saudi Arabian and the Saudis and the Russians, and then you've got that compounded by coronavirus. There are serious issues to be debating, and then we are debating Adams Oshio Mole. Now, because you mentioned the fact that I'm a lawyer, I'll not go there. It took the Court of Appeal less than 72 hours to hear an appeal related to the office of the chairman of the APC. What is so special about that office? How many Nigerians have lost their lives clamped in prison waiting for one appeal or the other that has not been heard. 
What about all the people who were... Agba Jalingo was in prison for months. So was Omo Yelisho. How caring was, this, was the judiciary? But when it comes to a problem with... It's an intra-class issue. When it comes to a problem amongst themselves, the Supreme Court, every, each, one, each and every one of the courts becomes so quick to intervene. Are, are, you, are, you, are you implying that the courts are complicit in, this, uh, in the situation that we're having? No, 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 no. I am not implying that they are complicit, but I am saying that the courts should be concerned that when it comes to issues bordering on human rights of the citizens, the courts are not really ever in too much of a hurry to do anything to free the citizens who are in fetters. And in some cases, the courts themselves have lent themselves as instruments in the hand of an oppressive state to keep citizens in prison. When it was on August time as well, that was how Court of Appeal was running. Everything went through the courts expeditiously. But when it is the average man, the poor man, the one who is truly in need of justice, the will of justice grinds ever so slowly. Yeah, I, I, I would go listening to you and then I wouldn't bring Ukochiko in. So let's get him into the conversation and let, let's take it from another angle. Um, it, it's the ruling or progressive Congress. And when there is this harmony there, it affects, uh, you know, the governance that they promised that they're going to give to us. So everybody will be happy to see it settled once and for all. He has said that his leadership style which a lot of persons were complaining about, is something he's willing to uh, reconsider. And he's acknowledged that that's one um, of the complaints that has been prominent um, among the um, parties that have been complaining uh, you know, so far. My question is, is he true to this? Will he be true to changing his leadership, uh, leadership style as a way to engender peace in his party. I don't care about Shimole. Let me say it again. I don't care about Adams or Shimole. Respectfully. But that's the ruling party. And it's I, the, see, the, the this machine is, through it, which it, we got it, this can, governance can, that we have can now. I, can, I, can I answer? All right. Adam so Shimole does not, does not who he is, is tell the world that he is. If you call yourself a comrade or go somebody that is, that is for the people, what are you doing? What have you done? Like you say, 15 million children is out of school. So for me, I don't think there is no basis for me to continue to add to, to an unnecessary drama that does not help the country. All right? What is happening, and I say this as an analyst, what is happening is that the Shumale's time is done. They've used him. His moment is over. He's finished. I'm telling you as an analyst. But he's, see, he's still he's see, presiding see, over see, the see, National Working see, Committee meeting. Walking he, dead man. He, 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 does not, he does not have any value. He, he has no political value. Right? Man he, has no he has no political so value. So if he so doesn't have, I, mean, I don't want to be, but if he doesn't have any value at the moment, first, he's presiding over the National Working Committee meeting. Second, all the people that, even the, the one that went to court, Victor Gaidam, that went to court and got um, a high court uh, ruling, making him the acting national chairman, is at that meeting. Those aggrieved members are at that meeting. They're all coming together to look at maybe it's not just about Oshomola alone, but the party itself. See, so you see, you see, doesn't that matter? It doesn't matter. See, what you are seeing is a reflection of the country and where we are as a nation. We're not making progress. This is not the first time this is happening. Let's go back to the PDP times. Obasanjo, Yaradua, Jonathan. They all had issues with their party leader. When you serve a purpose, your purpose is done, they trash you away. That is what, that's what the same thing that is happening to Oshimole. He has no political value. He can fight and fight and fight and use his influence because of the party chairman to get a court to do what they're supposed to do, what they're not supposed to do. I don't care about that. Right? I'm more interested to see okay, what are we doing policy wise? What, how, are we, how are we moving forward, the country forward? Are they saying anything about that? He's struggling, right? He has made money as governor. What has he done? He has made money as a national chairman of the APC. He's having a quarrel with the governor of the state. Not for the people. So and, how, and, and that how, distinction, how is that? And that, that distinction must be made. That clear. situation in Edo State is, I mean, is also very high in the list of troubles that the party is having. How will this, I mean, this development now affect that? See, 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 see. You finish and then he calls no, it. The thing is that from Edo, what you saw, what you saw that is happening in Edo presently, happened in Anambra State in the past. Happened in Oyo State in the past. Keeps happening around in Nigeria, even in Lagos State. Is the issue of God for reason? It's part of the problem we have in our policy, in our, in our politics, and what is happening in government. When somebody feels entitled to the state coffers, 
because maybe he helped or he facilitated for someone to be in office. That is what is happening. It's not about accountability. So how table. is this whole thing that, that I mean, what is played out now? The, see, the whole has thing, everything. Is see, how will they resolve it? It's not going to get. Style. It's not going to get. It's not going to get resolved by saying that he's telling the people that be that he's willing to work according to their terms. That is what he's saying. That's what he's suggesting, and that's the interpretation, All right? But let me tell you, it's not going to solve anything. We're still going to see continuous intra-party crisis within the APC till the election of 2023. See, they are there to get power. They're not there to help do, the people. Do you, do you agree that he, he's saying that he's going to, willing to work to their term, not that he is going to moderate his style to be a bit more accommodating of differences and all of that? Let me say this. I, I titled the book, Do Not Die in Their War. When I said that, what I was actually saying was, be careful not to become collateral damage in the power struggle between the different feudalistic hegemonies that are going to be fighting for power in Nigeria. Adam Oshi Omole has had his time. If he was to have a united party behind them, if they were united behind the purpose, the purpose was the capture of power. They got that. Power is already nestling where it would be. Now it's about 2023, and then they started their thing. My own is nothing in that dispute has anything whatsoever to do with the Nigerian people. If anything, it is a disputation as to how they will share the spoil. Because the APC has had five years in power now. In those five years, it's a simple case of you checking your pocket. Where were you five years ago? Where are you today? And let me be clear, and I'm, I'm saying this without any apologies to anybody, is a class failure. The entire Nigerian political class, as a class, because in reality there are no parties. As a class, there is a mass failure. But then we have to look at ourselves as well. What kind of leaders have we attracted? Because it must also be a reflection of the kind of people that we also are. Because we need to be asking ourselves very clearly. Now, this seems to be the people that are willing to come out. The people that keep... That is we, how the system the citizens, is. The, the citizens is always complain like about the quality of leadership. Mm. But there, there is also a saying that you get what you deserve. You get what you put there. Every so where system, is our blame in this? I'm sorry, please, Ugo Chiku. Every system is designed to produce something. When you are designing anything... I'm a lawyer, but I understand a bit about design. And I know that when you're designing something, you design for a purpose. The Nigerian state has designed, is not designed to afford a choice to the citizens. The democratic space itself is not democratic. You have a situation where those who are in control of the instruments of coercion are the ones who are able to impose their will electorally. It's all well and good for us to be speaking Dogon Turenchi in Lagos. Get outside Lagos and go to the Delta, and you'll find that election time is worth time. Once you're outside Lagos where the cameras are constantly focused, you find that elections in Nigeria is actually war. There is a battle for spoil. The people themselves are the game. The politicians don't really care. If they cared, they would, have, they would be worried and focused about doing something upon which they might be able to base their electoral value. But they know they don't need our vote. They vote on our behalf. Okay, I, I need to, I'm told we don't have much time. I wish this conversation, we could continue indefinitely, but time is always a problem. I'm just going to um, come to the advice that was given by the appeal court judge in his ruling um, on the Oshimole uh, matter, saying that political parties should learn to address their issues in in, in internally without resorting uh, to the <laughs> court. It, 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 so with the ruling that, that political, parties, me, with the, yes, political parties, yes, political yes. parties, yes, political parties. So with the ruling 
and this meeting that has been conveyed, do you see maybe a withdrawal of some of the cases that are currently in court when it regards to the APC leadership crisis? But why you, why you mentioned that it, the judge said it's one of the worst things I've read in this country. When, when, when a judge is supposed to be there to interpret the constitutional right and do everything fair in, in accordance with the spirit of the constitution, he's now playing an advisor to political parties, all right? Telling them what to do, what not to do, sending a message. So it doesn't make sense, all right? So for me, it, it's a mockery of the system. It's a mockery of where we are as a country and who we are. And uh, sadly, I, I, for me, the APC crisis, the intra-party crisis is going to continue. And as it continues, it's not just the one-off thing. It's a reflection of where we are as a country, of the politi politicians that we have, or the policies that we have, policymakers that we have. Oshimole, I've not heard him say anything about development, development, moving the country forward, or what they've done. Five years, they've failed woefully. And they're struggling to, and they're struggling. They're not struggling to, to enter there and do better. They're struggling to continue the, the trajectory of failure. All right, I'm afraid that's where we have to stop. Thank you very much, gentlemen. It's been thank a pleasure you, having thank, this thank conversation you, with thank you, you very much. Thank you very much for having us. Right, we'll take our plots report now, and when we return, I'll be giving my take. Stay with us. The Coalition for Truth and Justice has accused International Human Rights Watchdog Amnesty International of being on a witch hunt against the Nigerian government. The National Secretary of the group, Abiodun Babalola, spoke to newsmen in Abuja, saying Amnesty International is being sponsored by foreign interests to distract the Nigerian military in its war against terror. I consequently wish to state that Amnesty International in operation in Nigeria made over 150 submissions against the Nigerian military through its lawyers, including Femi Falana SAN, Professor Ujuku SAN, as well as other international uh, human rights lawyers to support their claims that the Nigerian military has consistently violated human rights in its operations. The Coalition for Truth and Justice, however, wishes to state that the presidential investigation panel absorbed completely the Nigerian military of human rights violations as the brilliant lawyers they paraded by Amnesty International could not prove that the Nigerian military indeed violated human rights in their operations. Amnesty International is an as an organization has been adequately mobilized by some enemies of Nigeria that are covertly sponsoring violence in Nigeria to continue to use its platform to distract and discredit the Nigerian military, especially in this period that the Nigerian military is making significant gains in the war against terrorism in Northeast Nigeria. Quite a number of emergencies are upon us, a side Lassa fever that isn't getting too much media coverage in the face of the rapidly spreading COVID-19 virus. We have disasters like the Abuladu explosion in Lagos State. We will always have emergencies, whether we like it or not. So it is imperative that government at all levels step up their game in emergency preparedness as well as its aftermath. Beyond making laws, Renewed efforts must be expended to enforce these laws. Civilians can be protected in spite of themselves, as we see in the lockdown happening around the globe. Let us not wait for emergencies to occur before we act. And that's my take. As always, thank you for watching the program. It returns same time every weekday, but if you miss out, you can always catch up via our YouTube channel at Plus TV Africa. Until next time, please remember to wash your hands regularly in this time of coronavirus. Thanks again and see you in a bit.